Hey what's up YouTube? This is going to be part two in my video series on how to back up, restore, or upgrade an iOS image. So for, let's uh, do a quick recap here. Take a look at our physical connections. So this is actually what I have connected up out here in my physical lab. Um, so it's real simple. We have a uh, console cable connected to our router and then we have a crossover cable going from our computer slash TFTP servers Ethernet port to one of your router interfaces pretty simple alright so let's take a look at that TFTP server that we downloaded so we'll go ahead and double click that open it up um, yours will probably be blank up in here right now but um take note that it says started down here that's letting you know that the server is started and it is working so in order to back up our image we have to configure some simple IP addressing in order to get our TFTP server to communicate with our router so we'll go ahead and open up putty here establish a serial connection into our router hit enter a couple times once we're in the router we're going to go ahead and type enable and then conf t to get yourself to global configuration mode type in IP address or I'm sorry wrong command we have to get into interface configuration mode first so on mine the interface is called interface ethernet 0 slash 0 on yours is probably fast ethernet or FA I just have an older device. I think it was pr it probably came out before fast ethernet. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, type in IP address and we'll give it an IP address of 192.168.1.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. Hit enter and then issue a no shutdown command just to turn that interface on alright so we have our IP address con configured here on our router next we have to configure the IP address of our computer slash TFTP server so we'll go ahead and just uh, go down here and right click on the little network box and open up network and sharing center go over here to the left and uh, click change adapter settings then you're going to right click on your NIC that is active that you're plugged into go down to properties and then come down here to IP version 4 settings here double click now once we're in here it'll allow us to actually configure a static IP for our computer so we'll go ahead and give it the 192.168.1.2 address since our router is 1.1 slash 24 subnet mask and for the default gateway it's going to be the router's IP address which is 192.168.1.1 alright so what we just did is we enabled a two-way communication from our computer to the router we're not going out to the internet only the router and the computer can talk to each other and that's it there's nothing else in the middle no switch it's a direct connection so let's go ahead and hit type in exit a couple times here get yourself back to privilege exec mode and let's just see if we can ping our device see if we can ping that TFTP server slash computer his IP address is 192.168.1.2 and it was successful if for some reason it was unsuccessful on your end that's because your firewall is most likely blocking ping requests um, so in order to do this you're going to have to disable your firewall because not only does Windows firewall or typically any other firewall you're using block ping requests it also blocks UDP port 69 by default 
so make sure that your firewall is disabled and then try again and it should work for you and we're just going to do the same thing on our TFTP server slash computer here go ahead and open up the command prompt type color A change it to green just because it looks better for those of you who didn't know you could do this you can type color A through Z and it'll change the color of the font for you I think green looks the best anyway we're just gonna ping our default gateway here which is the router's IP address which is 192.168.1.1 verify that we have communication so the TFTP server can can ping the router the router can ping the TFTP server we have an established connection between the two devices awesome so let's go ahead and just uh... whoops clear the page here a little bit from privilege exec mode we're gonna go ahead and do a show flash and if you remember from the first video this right here is actually the name of the file that's stored in flash this is the the iOS image file name um, you're going to need this so that's why we wanted to do the show flash to pull this up so we'll go ahead next and type copy flash tftp and what this is telling the router to do is what it says copy the flash send it to the tftp server hit enter it's gonna ask you for the name of the file that you want to copy to the TFTP server so go ahead and highlight that file and just right click it and it'll automatically fill it in for you so you don't have to type it out and then you're gonna to have to give it the IP address of the TFTP server that we're trying to send this file to so if you remember the IP address of our computer slash TFTP server is 192.168.1.2 hit enter it asks you if you want to change the file name you can go ahead and change it if you want I don't recommend it um, if you're doing this I would keep it the same so you know what it is I'm just gonna make mine test because I don't want to get it mixed up with any of my legit files that I have up there and hit enter now you should see some stuff happening over here in your TFTP server and we're just gonna go ahead and wait a couple minutes here and it should be successful I'm just gonna close this out so it's pretty simple for the most part I mean it, it you establish a two-way communication between the devices and you send the file via the TFTP server I mean it's really not that hard there's other ways to do it over a network but um, this is the simplest way to do it and this is how I learned um, we'll go ahead and open up our documents here or where or I'm sorry I'm gonna open up my storage drive because that's where I saved that TFTP root folder from earlier and that file should show up here as soon as it's done transferring and that's pretty much it um, as far as backing up your image that's all you have to do that way you can save that image and if it ever becomes corrupt or it gets deleted you have it backed up you can go ahead and you know restore it which we're gonna talk about in the next video so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was helpful um, feel free to like and subscribe to my page and thanks for watching.